I've had the same team in place for a long time with Eco Challenge, which has many more disasters. Um, you know, we, have, we bring our own helicopter pilots in um, that we use. We're very particular about the machines that we use because we know what machines can fly and which kind of wind, which kind of terrain. Uh, same medical crew for many, many years. It's a very tight knit group of people that have been in very bad, some of the worst storms in the Andes Mountains in Patagonia. You know, worst storm in 10 years, getting people off, off of a 14,000 foot cliff face. Um, you know, this year in Borneo, someone dying in front of my very eyes at Eco Challenge, a guy actually dying as his lung collapsed, and we had to reinflate his lung because he had an open chest wound from going into a branch. And um, Dr. Adrian Cohen, before, right, I mean, two feet away from me, looked at me and said, Mark, this is the worst one ever. Let's just do this, and stuck a needle right into the guy's lung and reinflated the guy's lung right in the mud. Um, these are some of the best. EMTs and adventure medics you could ever find. What we do is we bring, we spend no expense on the right helicopters, the best pilots, the best doctors and medics, and we bring in a company each year called Lateral Linking to put in our microwave communications so that we're never going to be without radio coverage uh, any, any time, no matter how far spread apart we are. And so that's the first thing we do. We try and mitigate by having a great response. We also do research to find out what are the expected dangers. We knew the expected dangers in Australia, for example, um, from the land would be forest fires, which happened. Um, we, we were ready for it and understood it. So we had a helicopter flying every morning, spotting forest fires, doing wind speed, wind direction, landing, seeing how dangerous this was getting. Um, additionally, we knew floods, which we haven't got to that part yet. And this is floods, which are a danger all the time. It, as the, the dry season becomes the wet season, it becomes an enormous amount of rain which will come down. The other thing, of course, is the, the snake situation. The nearest danger of a death in Survivor was Richard, which he picked up that snake by the tail that day, you know, like he was playing around. Actually, had that snake bitten, he wouldn't be sitting here right now. Um, we... Um, <laughs> Luckily, being a large man, um, he would have lasted longer. And our plan was everybody's blood groups and medical details are lodged with the private hospital, in that case in Kodakina Blue, or in Australia case in Cairns. So there are doctors that have everyone's um, files and are ready. Our doctor is on the satellite phone with them. And for example, when Michael got burned, you know, he was in that hospital in Cairns within an hour and a half of the accident, which is very, very fast. And then we found out that they couldn't really deal with a burn properly in Cairns. So immediately, uh, we chartered a private jet, had him on that jet 45 minutes later, and flew him to another city where the best burns unit uh, in that part of Australia was. So it's, it's a matter of having the budget, having the plans in place. And of course, had the forest fire been completely out of control, you know, we obviously would put, have to put lives first, We'd move everyone back, um, separate them, feed them a little bit, keep them until the forest fire was controlled, then put them back and play the game. The game has to go on. There's no question about that. Um, and so that's what we would do.